What is it? Why are we stopping? Tell me you're joking. We are not going to cross back into the Paragas facility through the fuel line. That's crazy. All right, but I know I'm going to regret this. I sense you, my master. Faint. Weak. Your senses betray you, as you betrayed me. After all that's happened, still you live. You are difficult to kill. For one as limited as you, perhaps. To have fallen so far and learned nothing, that is your failing. The failure is yours. No longer do your whispers crawl within my skull. No longer do I suffer beneath teachings that weaken us. And now you run in search of the Jedi. They are all dead, save one. And one broken Jedi cannot stop the darkness that is to come. Perhaps we shall see. What, what's wrong? Are you all right? Damn it, hold on. It's only a little farther. Don't give up on me now. What happened to you? You look fine. Come on. We need to keep moving. It's a utility droid. 
Looks like it's been hit with an ion charge and dumped here.
This door's magnetically sealed. I can't believe this. The ship's right out there, and we can't get to it. Huh? What is that piece of junk saying? How can you even understand that noise? Alright, well, if he can slice the door open from the terminal above, don't let me stop him.
quick. We're gonna need some time to fire up the engines. Let's give the laser turret a workout. company. All right, let's get out of here. There is no time. We must leave. hit us, we're dead. But if they keep missing us, we're dead. It's great odds. Somebody shut that trash compactor up! What are the asteroids? They can be destroyed by us as well as them, can they not? That'll take out the whole field, the colony, and maybe us. We might not even be able to jump to hyperspace in time. Then we die here. Choose now. Hold on! This is gonna get a little rocky. Well, now that we just killed a planet, maybe one of you can tell me what's going on. Because between assassin droids, a Sith Lord that looks like he sleeps with vibroblades, and being target practice for a Republic warship, I was better off in my cell. The Republic warship was the Harbinger. It was seized on its way to Telos by the Sith. They sought you, Jedi. Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. 
When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. True. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to per Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Repaired this ship. My eye. Next thing you know, it's going to claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on. Get! Because you are the last of the Jedi. Once you are dead, then they have won. Whatever lies you tell yourself are of no consequence. The Sith believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. The Jedi Civil War destroyed the Jedi. By the war's end, barely a hundred Jedi remained. Many fell in battle, and many more were seduced by Revan's teachings. The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi. And the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the Room of a Thousand Fountains have fallen still in reverence to the fallen Jedi and those now lost. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall and the civil war that followed. Perhaps, but they are Jedi no longer. If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought. Look, enough with the we already. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them, you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end, I fear it may not be enough. You fought in the Mandalorian Wars, and it cost you everything. Are you willing to sacrifice as much again? You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. <laughs> Your fool's words echo of a Jedi. You have much to learn. But we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also, in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. Look, uh, not like I care or anything, but you might want to go check on our passenger, especially with that hand of hers. We're on autopilot until we hit Telos. Until then, a droid could fly this thing. Besides, I think our passenger could use your help. I think she was barely keeping it together. I'm surprised she's able to stand with all that pain rolling off of her. Are you blind? If I were her, I'd be screaming like a stuck Minoc. Well, I mean, a very strong, manly Minoc. I think she's just too proud to show any weakness. Especially in front of you. In case you hadn't noticed, she won't say two words to me. But she'll talk your ear off any chance she gets. What you think matters to her. A lot. She wants you to respect her. Besides, we haven't got much else to do until Telos.
have you come for more answers? There is little more left to give. That does not surprise me, any more than you hearing my thoughts when we were apart. The pain, however, was unexpected. If I could, I would have shielded you from it. I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme then the sensation you would feel upon my death might be less than that, though much quicker. Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragas. I confess its nature eludes me as well, but the bond is strong and its roots run deep. It seems the force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. Ask, and I will answer. Indeed. And was it the same as before? If my suspicions are correct, perhaps the damage the Jedi Council did was not as permanent as they thought. It is not an easy thing to cut one off from the Force. What did you believe? That you suddenly lost your connection with the Force without reason? Indeed it is. It is much like losing one's ability to listen or being put into a deep sleep, unable to awaken to the galaxy around you. Such a thing has been done before, when Jedi have pronounced sentence on their own and exiled them as they did you. It is possible that such a thing can be undone. Still, even so, the chances of the Jedi undoing such a thing for a traitor is a slim thing at best, assuming they yet live. Our link may have had other consequences. Perhaps you can hear the Force again, distantly, through me. If so, then there is hope. I may be able to teach you, train you to feel the Force again. And if you will not allow me to help you, then other Jedi must train you or undo the damage they have done. Do not honor me, fallen Jedi. Honor it by listening and learning. Do that, and perhaps we shall survive this thing, you and I. I offer to train you to become strong again, to know the ways of the Force, and to hear the Force sing within you as it once did. Then our training shall begin. Whenever I travel with you, I shall impart what I can to you through my words and presence. Ask. Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V. It is a tale you already know well. 
Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. Indeed, the Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict, shaped the Jedi, and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. Revan and Malak, and all the Jedi that served them, turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic, wounds that bleed still. As all Sith do without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak, and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. After defeating Malak, Revan left the Republic, and there are none who know where he has gone. It is said that the Sith remnants turned on themselves after Revan defeated Malak, reducing Korriban to ruin as the Republic still bleeds and struggles for life. Where Revan wanders now, I do not know. It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal. We shall see if the Republic has the... A culture's teachings, and most importantly the nature of its people, achieve definition in conflict. They find themselves or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant beast that labors for breath and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War, fleets of warships, soldiers and people, and this new threat. The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see, the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. They are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things, against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground, and if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come. Ask. These Sith, they seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith, since the Jedi Order was first split. Yes, the Jedi Civil War is not the first one of its kind. Thousands of years ago, the Jedi had another civil war that split the Order. It was a terrible thing. A faction among the Jedi abandoned the teachings of the Order, following their own path. They waged war on their fellow Jedi, a war that raged across the galaxy. But these fallen Jedi were cast out, defeated, and they retreated to worlds in the Outer Rim. Over time, they took on the mantle of the Lords of the Sith, but in their hearts they never forgot the Jedi. The hatred for the Jedi Order burns in their veins like fire and echoes in their teachings. Revan tasted it, as Malak did. In a manner of speaking, they are different from Malak in that they are concerned only with the destruction of the Jedi. For them, it is all that matters, all that ever mattered. It is a different war these Sith wage, a thing of silence and shadow. They strike from the darkness, hiding from the face of the galaxy until all Jedi are exterminated. After all the Jedi are gone, then the galaxy is theirs, no matter whether the Sith or the Republic rules. It is the dark side that shall reign, unchecked. Ask. 
I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind... He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. If I were you, I would see... Ask. I would see to... He is what? How's our passenger? She's still aging? Yeah, to you, maybe. I don't usually hear much beyond fool and imbecile. She's lucky she's a Jedi, or someone would have killed her years ago. I mean, how old do you think she is? She may have been good-looking once, but it takes some hard living to make creases like that. Yeah. Her face looks like it was plowed by crazed Ord Mantell farmers. Don't tell me you were too distracted by her personality to notice. Whoa, all right, all right, don't get mad at me. Hey, I didn't ask her to stay behind and get her hand cut off, okay? I mean, I appreciate what she did and all, but she could stand to lay off the insults herself, you know? Like we have a choice? It's the only place Baragas had logged in their astrogation charts. Well, if you thought Baragas was dead, then Telos is a dying world they're trying to breathe back to life. Should be there before too long. You can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. So? What happened? Don't give me that. There were plenty of times back on Paragus where a lightsaber would have been helpful. So where's yours? Oh yeah? I thought a Jedi was supposed to be married to their lightsaber. Guess I heard wrong. Were you a single hilt or one of those double-bladed Jedi? Huh. I hear the twin blades are harder to master, but they can make enemies stampede over each other running for cover. A lot of Jedi in the Mandalorian Wars use double-bladed sabers. A more aggressive blade gives you more slaughter per swing. Hey, you didn't go red, did you? Yeah, unique how? Must have been something. Sure be nice to have it now. Might make those sit think twice before coming after us. Alright, forget I said anything. Like I said before, you can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. Should be there before too long.